Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle comic review of King Size Special, Submariner issue one. Now this came out in January 1971, quite a few years ago. It's quite a tatty issue, uh, like many of my comics. Now this one is 68 pages and it's all reprints, though it's got a few posters inside that I'm not certain if they're reprinted or not, so uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. However, got a lovely cover there, Sal Buscema did, and this is the quest of doom, the deadliest battle since time began. Well, that's a bit maybe over the top, but it was actually quite generally a good little story. Reprints from Tales to Astonish, of course it was uh, sharing the mag with the Hulk, and though this issue is excellent, I've also got them in a slightly different form of course, in this, the Epic Collection Submariner. Hopefully there will be a volume two at some point, who knows? However, of course, with always these things, we've got here is the brilliant cleaned up version. You can see it's very nicely uh, cleaned up, and this is issue 70. So that's 70, 71, 72, and 73 are included. And you've got the stories, obviously, very nicely cleaned up there. But however, if you want them in the original comic form, this sort of thing is really good. Unless you, of course, can get a copy of the original. Now, obviously, the covers come off. <laughs> that's always the way. It's, I'd say I'm going to take the back off as well. Why not? Just have the uh, covers comic. And you can see this. Now, I actually quite like it in this form as well. But, uh, the start of the quest, Stan Lee, Gene Cohen, Vince Coletta, and Artie Semek. And it, uh, Namor is returning from his journey to the surface, which you saw in Daredevil 7. Now, it doesn't include the Daredevil 7, but uh, still, which is, of course, a classic with Wally Wood. And I'm not certain when these came out originally. There must have been 65, 66. I'm not certain. Let's just have a look on here. It probably gives no information in terms of the dates. But, uh, it's always best to have a quick look. August 1965, the originals. So it's five years later. Well, what do you get? You've got great stories, obviously. Submariner comes back, and of course, as always, he leaves his kingdom for about five minutes, and uh, someone's decided to take over. It's always Atuma or, or someone else, Tiger Shark. There's always someone trying to take out over Atlantis. Probably Lady Dorma did as well at some point. I can't remember. But anyway, everyone did. Probably Sue Storm as well. They all do. And there's old poor old Submariner, he's obviously uh, falls easily prey to a blast. And then, of course, these chains are useless. Bring the electro <laughs> electron clamps. Okay, I'm certain that they're very effective, but of course, there he is. He's trapped there, and he's, of course, Lady Dorma comes to the rescue, which is, of course, handy that she stands there. There, of course, uh, you gloat, of course. And there's the Enchanted Trident. Now, this is a bit of a ridiculous storyline, but the Trident of King Neptune. You remember it, of course. Well, of course, we don't, because that story was never told to us. But, of course, we get a nice, convenient flashback showing, obviously, uh, that uh, there is a Trident, which gives you the rights to be the ruler of Atlantis. Though, of course, Krang, he will never accept anything. He's always devious. So, of course, he gets out, and he's off on the quest. Now, my love, types up the quest, etc., to the end of the days, I shall be part, obviously, of the blame. And you've got Krang there, gloating away as he usually does, etc. Thinking, no, he's got number two there. It looks like number two. Maybe he thinks he's number two, but obviously it's a, um, not, not number two. However, straight away, he's got, of course, Basil and Octopus that comes. He's got a, quite a few problematic uh, things as he goes through. What madness is this? This cave mouth is sealed. No, with the squid. Sorry, squid. <coughs> I'd be useless under sea, wouldn't I? With a squid, octopus, whatever. That one, I had that one. Amazing Spider-Man. I really love that issue. That was the, a guy named Joe. And I think that was the final Ditko one. Brilliant. Spidey battles the chameleon. I love the chameleon as well. Great character. Spidey battles the vulture. These ones, king size specials, were always great. And I had that one as well. Uh, this is issue one of the X-Men one. Brilliant one. Obviously with the X-Men versus the Avengers. And then you've got Escape to Nowhere, he's bashing away there, and he flings some things and he escapes. Of course, he's also got Krang, his art to him there. They're really helping along this quest. You're not supposed to come along trying to dis disrupt everything, but of course, Krang doesn't follow rules, does he? So, uh, but it's it's great artwork. Gene Cullen, always excellent. I mean, there's no question about, I could be queen. And of course, there is a, a man shape, a gigantic seaweed man. So he gets the lot in this story. Great little story. However, you've also got these, and I don't know if these are reprints, if they've been print, done before or where they're taken. Actually saying that, they do look a bit like they come from some other comics because they're 
bit sort of odd. So you've got their different sort of thing. Maybe that was from the Iron Man one, Tales to Tales of Suspense, maybe. I don't know about the other one. Maybe one's a Bill Everett. That looks like Bill Everett. I might be totally wrong on that one. However, you've got the beloved of Namor there. See that Lady Dormer. And a prince there was. A prince there was. Okay, whatever. Imperious Rex, they always love that one. And you've got the uh, called Seaweed Monster. Great opportunity for lots and lots of ink lines there, just drawn across there. However, of course, you know he's going to escape. And of course, Krang gloats like anything further on. And there's all, of course, more the faceless ones. Hang on, the faceless ones. That sounds a bit. No, that's someone other storyline I'm thinking about. Continued, and you've got another story. Of course, he then faces these diamonds. There's a lot of complexity to this quest. But however, I don't want to spoil the story. But you guess, of course, he, this is a long time ago, 965. He does survive. Of course, that would be weird if he didn't. That is, he's no longer. Krang actually was the ruler of Atlantis. That would be weird, wouldn't it? But no, Fantastic Four. They've got there 104. I love that one, Magneto. Which actually, that's weird, isn't it? With Submariner, of course, you've that storyline as well. You've got Submariner, uh, Sub, Submariner. Spider-Man 90. Brilliant one. Avengers 81. I love that one. Red Wolf. Uh, Thor 181, Captain America 131, Hulk 133, Drax on. I quite enjoy that one. I remember getting that in the shops. I loved that. Uh, rubbishy story now. <laughs> but at the time, it was quite good. However, Black Panther 69 for the Daredevil. You've got Amazing Adventures number three. You've got Black Widow, of course, Mandarin with Inhumans. Sergeant Fury 81. Wow. Somewhere. Oh, you got quite a few kits. Now, my favourite king size. I love that one. Captain America King Size number one. That had reprints as well. That's very, they all have reprints. I don't know why I didn't do a few original stories in these, but by that time they weren't. Uh, you've got here Thor King Size three, Avengers King Size four, Hulk King Size three, Special Marvel Edition one, and that was Thor as well. Two Thors. That was a lot of Thor. You had Thor, 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 Thor King Size, and of course Silver Surfer 18. That was the last of these Silver Surfers. And Conan Barbarian number one. I wonder what happened to Conan Barbarian. Well, that was a that would have been a great one to pick up. Spoof number one. If you picked up spoof number one, oh, should I go for Conan or should I go for spoof? And also you've got Kazar number two. Hmm. Don't think that was that's not the same as the Kazar that came out later at Kazar 2. Raw High Kid, you've got Western Gunfighters. I love those ones. Million model 186. However, look at that lovely bullet. Bill Everett one there. And it's so, a circa 1940. I think it's quite nice that one. Doesn't it actually, oh yeah, it is signed Bill Everett. I was going to say, it's, there it is signed Bill Everett. And then you've got another story, of course, by Force of Arms. And I assume this is by this time was the issue 73 of Tales to Astonish. And you've got, that's it. I'm not going to show you how it ends. Because of course, the thing is, it doesn't end in this, which is terrible. How can you bring out a King's Eye special and you only have the story and it just doesn't finish? Because there was a few more stories. Of course, Epic Collection. You get the Epic Collection. And you've got the, actually how it, I think it gets all the way to the end in this. Might be completely wrong on that. Yeah, I think it does. Yes, it does. And you've got some lovely posters again. Some more nice posters. Now, I'm not certain who did the artwork for these ones. Sometimes you can never see the uh, names. Anyway. And this one, of course, is another one where Iron Man versus Submariner. Which is Imperious Rex again. They always love to use that. See you next year, land lover. That's very true. So that's it. What a great little issue. I love these king size ones. Uh, they were special. Even though they were reprints, they were still, for me, just brilliant. 68 pages of sheer delight. And I always love picking them up. So uh, sadly, I don't do them the same way. They're just not as good nowadays in these special ones. But that's it. That's the way the world works. So Submariner, issue one, special is it special? King size special? Annual? I don't know. But king size special. 